Regionalization is a subdiscipline of clustering that combines the general intuition and the general goal of unsupervised learning to group observations based on their statistical similarity with geographical constraints. And it's a fantastic example of geographic data science in action because it combines machine learning with geography and it brings the role of space and the role of geographical relationships to the front as a first-class citizen into the statistical model. Let's have a look in this clip about what is the intuition behind regionalization, what are the more formal conditions for an algorithm to be called regional, a regionalization one, and then we'll wrap up with a couple of examples of how regionalization applications can be used in everyday life. Regionalization is still unsupervised machine learning, but it's a sub-discipline in that it brings space as a first-class citizen to the algorithm. At its core, regionalization really is about aggregating basic spatial units that we will call areas into larger units made up of similar areas that we will call regions, hence the name regionalization. And the intuition of this set of techniques is laid out here. Just as any other clustering algorithm, it's still about splitting a data set into groups so that every observation in a class or a cluster is more similar to the other observations within that cluster than to observations in other clusters. Now, the difference of regionalization is that on top of this set of uh, rules, it imposes an additional constraint for these for these. Um, segmentation. And that is that observations that are put into the um, same cluster also need to be spatial neighbors. And you can maybe guess how we're going to define these neighborhood relationships with a spatial weights matrix. But for now, just keep in mind that what regionalization is trying to do is perform a clustering exercise, same as non-spatial clustering, but one in which geographical relationships are added as an additional um, layer of constraints. And in the sense that only observations that are geographical neighbors can then made up into uh, the same cluster. To formalize a bit more what a regionalization algorithm needs to, uh, what are the requirements that it needs to meet, uh, Duke and colleagues in 2007 is the best reference. If you're interested, the paper in itself, the, the article, is a very good uh, guidance and introduction to regionalization. But if you're interested only in the essence, here are the five conditions that an algorithm needs to be regionalization. It needs to aggregate, as we've already said, geographical areas into a predefined number of regions. In Clustering parlance, we are still grouping observations into clusters. Now we're calling observations areas and clusters regions, but we're still um, performing this, this clustering. And we're performing this clustering following what they call a particular aggregation criterion. This refers to whether we're minimizing the distance between the observations in each cluster or we're maximizing the distance between the observations across or between clusters or some combination of the two and how in particular that distance is measured, etc. The second condition is that the areas within a region must be geographically connected. This is the key difference that makes, re makes regionalization regionalization. This is what we also call the spatial contiguity constraint, that areas that are to be part of the same region need to be geographically connected. The next one, the third one, is that the number of regions must be smaller all or equal to the number of areas. This is to say that we're performing an aggregation, that if we have a number of areas n, that are being aggregated into a number of regions k, then k needs to be equal or smaller. We can only have, in the extreme, we will have each area being part of a region, but in most cases we will have a smaller number of regions than that of areas. 
and then each area must be assigned into one and only one region, which is to say that the regionalization needs to be exhaustive. Everyone in the data set at the end of the day needs to be assigned into one and only one region. So there is no areas that are not part of regions, and also there aren't areas that are part of more than one region. And then each region must, must contain at least one area. This is also to say that we cannot have empty regions. These are the five characteristics that a regionalization algorithm needs to meet. Now, this is a family, this describes a family of algorithm algorithms and a family of techniques, but there are um, several approaches. And here is an illustration of what one of these exercises might, might give rise to or might yield. What you're seeing here is, is the center uh, of London, and this is from the example that you will work through in the practical side of the block. And maybe if you squint a little bit, you manage to see that each uh, region is delineated by color, but each region has a lot of polygons, and each polygon is what we call an area. So what the algorithm has done is grow these larger areas or these regions in a way that every area within the region is um, contiguous. Think for a second, if we had if this was a non-regionalization clustering algorithm, there is no reason why all of the yellow areas would be in the same part of the of the map and would all of them be con connected by a contiguity relationship. It is only because the regionalization algorithm imposes this constraint that the final map looks more like a zoning. In, in some cases, regionalization algorithms are also called zoning algorithms. And it is because they create zones of areas that are contiguous and statistically similar. And as I was saying, regionalization is a family of techniques, but that involves or comprises quite a few different algorithms. So just as an example of just a few, here is some, the automated zoning procedure or ACP, the Arizal, the max p, which is a more modern take, and there, there's several of them. And as I've mentioned before, if you're interested in a categorization or a typology of these algorithms, then Duke and colleagues from 2007, which is referenced also in the course website, is an excellent place to start. It's a bit more advanced probably than we're, what we're aiming for in this course, but if you're interested, it's definitely um, accessible and, and it's a great place to continue your, your regionalization journey. Now that we have a better sense of what the intuition and the definition of what regionalization is, let's have a look at a couple of examples that will illustrate how these algorithms are useful and have been used actually in, in the real world. The first one is census geographies. Earlier in this course, and maybe you might be aware um, from your own background that the census, the Office of National Statistics, when they uh, produce, when they design the census, and when they distribute the census or the output of census of the census, the, the data sets that make up the, the census, they distribute it at a hierarchy of geography. So in other words, when you're uh, looking for data for the census, this is available at several levels. At the finest point, we have output areas. You might have heard of this term, and if you haven't, it's not critical. But this is the smallest type of area that you have uh, availability for census data. And then these output areas are gradually aggregated into larger and larger areas into what's called lower layer super output areas, LSOAs, which you have worked with in, in this course. And then LSOAs are aggregated, as we saw in the weights block, into middle super output areas, MSOAs, and then MSOAs are aggregated into local authority districts. And this is a hierarchical uh, set of geographies in a way that output areas are combined into LSOAs and LSOAs are combined into MSOAs and MSOAs are combined into um, local authority districts is almost like a set of Russian dolls where the smallest ones fit perfectly into the larger ones and in a hierarchical way. Now you might think or you might have wondered sometimes or maybe not, but there's the, the question of how are, 
are these aggregations being performed? How do we decide which output areas make up each of the LSOAs that they are assigned to? And in fact, this is a regionalization algorithm or is a regionalization problem that is solved by a regionalization algorithm or what we would call um, also a zoning algorithm. And what it's doing really is grouping smaller areas into larger areas in ways that the regions or into larger regions in ways that these regions are as com compact and coherent in terms of the statistical characteristics as possible, but also that um, they are geographically connected. And this is what the, the census does. Another example, much more modern and recent, is uh, a project called the Life Hoods, uh, developed by researchers at Carnegie Mellon University, which a few years ago set out to redefine these neighborhood boundaries or this um, segmentation of cities in smaller parts or neighborhoods, but with a particular goal of drawing these neighborhood boundaries based on the social patterns of the people who live in those areas. And to do that, they used uh, Foursquare data, which is a, an online social network based on location in which their users can check in. So they can say, they can report on the app where they are, the venue where they are and when they are. And based on these usage patterns, the LifeHoods project aggregated sets of venues, sets of bars, restaurants, cinemas, etc., into areas that are geographically consistent. So uh, bars or restaurants that are part of the same neighborhood or lifehood, as they call it, need to be next to each other, so need to be geographically connected, but also they need to be sharing the same type of users. And what this generated in a fascinating set of maps that you can check on the, on the project website is a redrawing of the neighborhood geographies of different cities in a way that better reflects the social layer and the social component of how cities inter of how users or, or citizens interact with amenities in, in cities.